One of the things that we as engineers often try to do is be perfect. Be perfect solving problems, be perfect in engineering design, be perfect on all of our tests and our exams throughout school. Well, I'm here to tell you that trying to be perfect on the PE exam can cause you to fail it. And in this edition of Pass the PE Exam, I'm going to give you some tips for how you can avoid being perfect on the exam and how doing so can help you pass the PE exam. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. So you want to ace the PE exam, right? Or even if you don't, when you get in there, your engineering brain is going to kick in and say, hey, we need to get every question right. Actually, you don't. And attempting to do so can really hurt you in trying to pass the PE exam. When I was studying for the PE exam, I would time myself when practicing problems. And you should too. You got to be in that pressure situation. And what I noticed was that I would waste so much time trying to solve a problem that I was unsure about. And it occurred to me that what if there are a lot of problems behind this one that I am sure about and I don't get to because of this one. That's when I came up with the nickname Time Waster. If I noticed that a problem would potentially be a time waster and waste valuable time that I couldn't use on other easier problems, I would quickly skip it and plan to come back to it later. Now, this may sound obvious, but many engineers fail to do it. They let the time wasters trick them into wasting all this valuable time and it usually costs them a passing grade on the exam. So here's how you can approach it. You can use this three-step process that I've used on the PE exam and other exams. Okay, easy, medium, hard, one, two, three, or you can think of it as a stop green, orange, red. You start the exam and you go through it the first time. And what you do is you look for the easiest of problems, right? This is kind of your green stage, right? Or your easy stage. And you nail them. You do them. You get them done quickly. You get the right answer. These are problems that you're 99.9% .9 sure you know. And how do you know that? Well, you can quickly read the question and probably you know that there's certain topics that you're better at than others, right? So you go through in your first pass and you nail the green or easy problem. Then you go through and you do your medium or your orange pass and you're looking for or the next set of problems that, hey, I kind of have a feel for this, but it's not as easy as the first one, right? Maybe you're a little bit stuck. It takes you a little bit longer time and you get through as many of them as you can, hopefully all of them. Then you come back and you do your final hard pass or your red pass for questions that are difficult. These are the time waster ones that could take you a lot of time and you start to work through them. And while you're working through them, you have to pay very close attention to how much time you have left in that segment of the exam. Because if you're close to the end, before the time runs out, you're going to at least want to guess on all of these hard problems. And I know you hear all the time, just guess C or whatever the case may be. I don't know if that's true or not, but I would just guess the same answer you know, for each of them, depending on the situation or the segment of the exam, again, to kind of slightly up your your chances of at least getting some of those hard questions correct, right? But this is a very, very simple process. Again, I like to call it green, orange, red, easy, medium, hard. Failing to do this can really set you back on this exam because like I said, if you get stuck on one or two time wasters and then you're having to rush through the green or easy problems and maybe missing ones that you should have nailed, it can be the difference between you passing the PE exam and not passing it. And it's a simple process that an engineer can very easily follow. And just be careful you don't want to get caught trying to be perfect on every question. You don't have to. If you follow this three-step process, you will go into the exam confident. You will be able to pick out the problems that you can nail and you will nail them and you will dramatically increase your chances of passing the PE exam. 
I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your PE exam result. Maybe it gets you licensed. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a topic that you want me to cover or a specific question that you'd like answered. Pass the PE PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.